Hello, I am Shikha Malhotra. Today's topic is going to be digital logic circuits. Let's move now to a demultiplexer. A demultiplexer, as the name suggests, has to be reverse of what a multiplexer does. It is a combinational circuit, just like your multiplexer circuit, it is also a combinational circuit, but it has only one input line, whereas 2 to the power n output lines. And if you remember, it is completely opposite of what a multiplexer was. A multiplexer had 2 to the power n input, 1 output, a demultiplexer will have 1 input and 2 to the power n output lines. Simply, if it is a single input, a multi-output combinational circuit. On the basis of the values of the selection lines, just like in the case of a multiplexer circuit, the input will be connected to one of these outputs. Unlike the encoder and decoder, there are n selection lines and 2 to the power n outputs. So, there is a total of 2 to the power n possible combinations of the inputs. We did not have any selection lines in the encoder and decoder circuit. That is the major difference between encoder decoder and a multiplexer demultiplexer. <clears throat> Let us take the example of 1 to 2 demultiplexer, which means 1 input, 2 outputs. There are going to be 2 outputs y0 and y1. One selection line with the same formula that we have used earlier in case of the multiplexer circuit also. So, here the selection line is S0 and the single input is A. On the basis of the selection values, the input will be connected to one of the outputs that we have here. Let us look at the block diagram. It is a 1 cross 2 demultiplexer. So, input is A, one selection line S, output are going to be 2 here. So, we have two outputs y1 and y0 and of course, the enable coming from E. That is a simple block diagram and we have already discussed the functioning of each one of these. Let us look at the truth table. Since we had only one selection line, so there is going to be one input S0 which can take either a value of 0 or a value of 1. However, the output side we have two outputs because it is a 1 cross 2 multiplex demultiplexer. We will have y1 and y0, both having value 0 or a or a or 0 in appropriate places. So, the expression of this output y0 is represented as s0 dash a, which is the first row. y1 is represented as s0 and a. The same expression is represented in the form of this block diagram that we see here. Again, S and A going as the input to Y0 in the direct form and the indirect form or the complemented form. So, S is going in the complemented form, A is going in the direct form. For Y1, we see both S and A going in the direct form. Let us move to the next topic which is the registers. So, if we have done about encoder decoders, multiplexer demultiplexer, there has to be a typical function that this register does. Let us compare this registers like we have had, we have studied or used registers of books and papers all through our life. The functioning of a register here is also similar to that. We always noted down things in our copies or registers or notebooks in our school or college time. Similarly, a register here in a computer is also going to do the same job of storing some information for us. So, what is it made up of? It is made up of flip-flops and we have learnt the functioning of flip-flops earlier and how each flip-flop has a different action to perform. So, register is a group of flip-flops with each flip-flop capable of storing one bit of information. That is what typically any flip-flop does. So, we have a register which is a combination or a group of flip-flops that makes it capable of storing more than one bit of information. So, an n bit register, it has a group of n flip flops, it will be capable of storing any binary information of n bits. <clears throat> In addition to the flip flops, it may also have some combinational gates that perform certain data processing tasks. We are just not storing information there. When we store information, we store it for future use, and that is where this combinational gate will come into use in any circuit. <clears throat> 
various types of registers are available to us commercially. The simplest register is one that consists of only flip flops with no external gates because that is the register which just does the form or the function of storing information there. The common clock is also attached to these circuits which is going to input some trigger to all these flip flops on the rising edge of each pulse and the binary data that is available at the four inputs are transferred into the four bit registers. This is an example of using a 4 bit registers which will have 4 flip flops and a clock which will help it to store that value. The 4 outputs can be sampled at any time to obtain the binary information that is stored in the register. It's just not about storage, it's also being able to use that stored information a little later. The clear input, it goes to a special terminal in each flip flop. All that I am discussing here will be very very obvious to you once we see the diagram. When this input goes to 0, all flip-flops are reset asynchronously. The clear input is useful for clearing the register to all zeros prior to its clocked operation. So it's just like a refresh activity. This is going to set it prior, the values to a 0. The clear input must be maintained at a logic 1 during a normal clocked operation. So when we need to wipe out the information, the clear input is set to 0, wherein when the information is being stored there, it is going to be at 1. Note that the, cloaks, the clock signal enables the D input, but that the clear input is independent of the clock, because we cannot have an automatically controlled clear input, because all, while we are storing the information, if it is independent, if it is dependent on the clock, it will keep changing from a 0 to a 1 on the dependency of the clock and then we may not be able to store information there. Let us take at the very first kind of register which is called as a shift register. Now the name suggests shift. We will see how a shift works here. A register which is capable of shifting its binary information in one or both the directions is called as a shift register. As we just discussed earlier, we will have multiple flip flops stored together to form a register so that we can store multiple bits of information. But it is not about only storage, we need to use that information for some maybe operations also. So when we are performing an operation on it, we will have to shift the value of one register to the other register. So that register is actually called as a shift register. The logical configuration of a shift register will consist of a chain of flip flops in cascade. So the value of one register, uh, one register can move on to the next one and that is why we are calling it as a chain of flip flops. Now each flip flop will have one value whereas whenever there is a shift the values of that flip flop will move on to the, va to the next flip flop in line. All flip flops will receive a common clock pulse and that initiates a shift from one stage to the next one. So it is not that the flip flop decides on its own to shift the values that it has stored. There is going to be a common clock pulse that is sent to all and when the clock pulse comes to each flip flop, it transfers its content to the next one in line. The bits that are stored in the registers will shift when the clock pulse is applied and inside or outside the register. Depending on what and how the clock pulse is activated, the bits that are stored in those registers or the flip flops I should say will move either ways. To form an n bit shift register, we have to connect n number of flip flops which is very obvious like I just gave you an example of 4 that if there is a 4 bit shift register, it will have 4 flip flops and they will be capable of shifting the values from one to the next one. So the number of bits of the binary number is directly proportional to the number of flip flops because as we said in the initial uh, session that each flip flop is capable of storing one bit of information. When we talk about a shift register, it can shift the bits either to the left or the right. That is what I was saying earlier also. So it is capable of shifting to the left or the right. We give them the names also accordingly. So a shift register which shifts the bits to the left is also called as shift left register. 
while the one which shifts the bits to the right hand side is also known as the right left uh, right shift register. Why? Because from the name it should be very obvious to us which side is the register's values going to shift. The most general shift the registers are often referred to as a bidirectional shift register with parallel road. Now when we talk about bidirectional it often means that it should be capable of shifting on both the sides. The output of a given flip flop is connected to the D input of the flip flop on its right hand side. Let us look at this block diagram, it is very clear that each flip flop is connected to the next. The output of the first is actually going as an input to the second and from second to the third and the third to the fourth and finally you see an output which is a serial output coming out of the last flip flop and a common clock is there which is common to all if you see the bottom line the same clock pulse is connected to each one of them which I said that a common clock pulse is triggered and that is done simultaneously it impacts each flip flop simultaneously and each one of them starts shifting corresponding to the lift or left or the right as it is designed the information is moved from left to right or right to left on that same clock pulse. So all four flip flops in this diagram would have one clock pulse on that clock pulse each of them will move its content to the neighbor. So just the same a common clock is connected to each register in series to synchronize all the operations. The serial input determines what goes into the leftmost position during the shift and a serial output will be taken from the output of the rightmost flip flop which is what I just discussed with you a minute back. Sometimes it is necessary to control this shift so that it occurs with certain clock pulses and not with others. This can be done, it is possible to do this because in this case we will inhibit the clock from the input of the register if we do not want it to shift. We do not let the clock pulse go to that register where we do not want the shift to happen. The shift can be controlled by connecting this clock to the input of an AND gate and a second input of the AND gate can then control the shift by inhibiting the clock. This we are going to see it in the diagram and it will become very easily understandable. It is also, also possible to provide extra circuits to control the shift operation through the D inputs of the flip flops rather than the clock input. As we just said maybe sometimes we are giving a clock to some flip flops some cl and some flip flops are not getting that clock pulse. We can also control it by giving this extra shift operation. And looking at another kind of uh, registers these are called as binary counters. What does a binary counter mean? The term binary has to have a meaning here. A special type of sequential circuit which is used to count the pulse is known as a counter. We know when we are writing a program we use a variable which is also used as a counter. In a normal English scenario a counter also means something that counts values of other activities. Now this binary counter is going to function in a similar manner. The counter is one of the widest applications of the flip flop. Based on the clock pulse the output of the counter will contain a predefined state. The number of this pulse can be counted using the output at the counter and that is how we will be able to count the values. The input pulse may be a clock pulse or may originate from an external source. This may occur at uniform intervals of time or maybe at random. So if you want a count at, at random that may be applied at random. If we want a pulse to work in uh, you know at very fixed uniform intervals it can be applied accordingly and the result of the counter will be given to us at a uniform interval. A counter that follows the binary number sequence is also called as a binary counter and hence the name is given to it as a binary counter. N, binar N bit binary counter is a register which has N flip flops that goes unsaid and associated gates that follow a sequence of states according to the binary count of n bits. So automatically it will be from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1. Let us look at this truth table, the counter outputs, the state number and the decimal counter output. There is a clock, if you look at it initially, first, second, third, fourth means it is going to be at a fixed interval of time 
And on the route, rightmost column, we have a decimal counter output which shows the count at that instant. How many types of counters can we discuss? Two of them, like I just mentioned earlier, we could have something either randomly controlled or at a fixed time control. So, the names are also similar to that, asynchronous counters or ripple counters. The second type is a synchronous counter, asynchronous or a ripple counter. If you look at this diagram, we use two T flip-flops here. We have all learned flip-flops earlier and we know how a T flip-flop functions. It is a toggle flip-flop. Apart from the T flip-flop, we can also use a JK flip-flop. The little setting has to be different from this one. By both, while we set these, it will be both of the inputs to 1 permanently. We are calling a flip-flop A and flip-flop B here. We have a logic 1, which is TA and the output of the first one going as the input to the second one and we have the output coming out of the second one. The external clock will pass to the clock input of the first flip-flop which is the FFA and its output I just mentioned to you is passed on to the clock input of the next flip-flop which is the FFB. Now let us look at the synchronous counters. In the asynchronous counter, the present counters output passes to the input of the next counter, which is what we just noticed. So, the counters are connected like a chain. This has a drawback. What is it? It is that it creates the counting delay and the propagation delay also occurs during this counting stage because we do not know when the pulse is coming. So, a synchronous counter is designed to remove this drawback. Let us see what a synchronous counter does. In the synchronous counter, the same clock pulse is passed to the clock input of all the flip-flops. If you see the last line which shows the clock CLK, it is connected to your FFA also and FFB also. So, if we had more number of flip-flops, this clock pulse would have gone further ahead to all of them. So, each one of them gets the clock pulse at exactly the same time and that is why it is a synchronous counter. So, in the synchronous counter, the same clock pulse is passed to the clock input of all the flip-flops. This clock signal produced by all the flip-flops are the same as each other. So, when they get the clock at the same time, they start functioning at the same time and the output is also received at the similar time or an expected time. The input of the first flip-flop, FFA, is set to, zero, uh, set to 1 so that the first flip-flop will work as a toggle flip-flop. Please remember, this is a T flip-flop that we have in mind and that we are using here. So, that can be used as a toggle flip-flop. The output of the first flip-flop is then passed to both the inputs of the next JK flip-flop. This is the case when we are using the next flip-flop as a JK flip-flop. These are the signal diagrams that we see are formed by the synchronous and the asynchronous uh, counters. Each diagram is very obvious of what is the kind of uh, uh, counter that we have used. You see a regular interval in each one of them. The interval is different, but there is a regularity in the pattern of the signal. So, each pulse is showing a very regular pattern. The duration can change. This is a signal diagram for a synchronous counter. Let us look at the ripple counter or also known as the asynchronous counter. Ripple counter is a special type of asynchronous counter in which the clock pulse ripples through the circuit. The N mod ripple counter formed by combination of N number of flip flops. This ripple counter can count 2 to the power N states and then the counter resets to its initial value. So, like the word ripple in English means it moves on from one to the other. The same is going to be followed here and that is very typical of the asynchronous counters. Different types of flip-flops will use different clock pulses and that are used here. The flip-flops are used in the toggle mode. The external clock pulse is applied only to one flip-flop. This is exactly what we had discussed in the asynchronous synchronous one that the clock will, pulse will be given to the first one and then it passes on to the second and the third and so on depending on how many flip-flops are there in that register, in that counter as versus comparison to the synchronous one where each of them got the clock pulse at the same time. So, what happens in this case? The output of this flip-flop is treated as a clock pulse for the next flip-flop.
and again from second the it becomes the input and the output of the second becomes the input to the third flip flop and that is how it continues. In counting sequence the flip flop in which the external clock pulse is passed that acts as a LSP or the least significant bit for us. Let us look at a binary ripple counter. When we use this we will have two JK flip flops that are used here. The high voltage signal is passed to the inputs of both the flip flops. If you see the last line in the diagram the LSP and MSB is written you will see that there is a line that goes into both of them and that is what is being discussed here that both of them will receive both the flip flops will receive the input at the same time. The high voltage input maintains the flip flops at a state 1. So, in the JK flip flops the negative triggered clock pulse is used here. We have learnt about negative triggered and positive triggered clock pulses when we were discussing about the JK flip flops. The output of Q0 and Q1 are the LSB and the MSB bits respectively. This is what I was trying to show here in this diagram that is the LSB because the pulse is being given to that particular flip flop. So, the next one automatically becomes your MSB. The truth table of JK flip flop helps us to understand the functioning of this counter. So, let us we do not have the truth table here because it is a very extensive truth table because of depending on the number of flip flops that we are going to use here in the counter. As many number of flip flops we use that many number of variables are going to be there in the flip flop and that becomes a little beyond explanation here in this session. So, we understand from this flip flop that you can have multiple flip flops both if you had assuming we had four of them whichever uh, flip flop has the pulse coming into it will become the LSB and the remaining will be there in between the last one will become your most significant bit. And that is about a binary ripple counter because it is a ripple counter we do not have a clock pulse being given to that simultaneously we will have one the clock pulse coming to the first one then moving on to the second one and so on that is the typical uh, feature of a ripple counter and specific to that if you are using only two JK flip flops that is why we call it as a binary ripple counter. Just taking you back to the first one which is your asynchronous or the ripple counters here that is where it will become very obvious to us that you have the circuit the clock pulse coming only into one. You look at the diagram here the clock pulse is coming into FFA and uh, the output Q is going into FFB. This is why it is called as a ripple counter because of movement uh, of the clock pulse from the first flip flop to the second and so on into the circuit. So, if you relate this and the binary ripple counter they are the same except for this that in this we have used a T flip flop they were using a JK flip flop and a binary is specific to having only two flip flops for its purpose. Thank you.